Assalamu alaikum viewers my name is Afsha Khalid today our topic is going to be patience Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim I will quote from Surah Al-Baqarah ayat number 153 in which Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala says Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu istainu bis sabri was salah Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu istainu bis sabri was salah Here Allah says O you who believe seek help in patience and as salah so what is the meaning of to be patient seek patience and offer salah patience is something that you need to hold on to it means to hold back something something that we dislike something that we like and we hold back on it for example this month of ramzan we are holding ourselves back from food and water during the day so this is sabr we are having we are in the state of sabr why because we we can eat but we are not eating similarly the other meaning of sabr is courage bravery to be steadfast not to complain to save yourself from a negative reaction not to complain in times of adversities not to complain in times of calamities these are all meanings that come under sabr and here allah is setting to ask for help with patience and with namaz why because if we look at namaz prayer is something that you do 5 times a day and this is a sign of ibadat and the success of a person lies with ibadat the more he is in the state of ibadat the more chances are that he is going to be successful therefore we see that sabr has been set equivalent to namaz that it teaches you a lot of holding how to hold back yourself on moments where you are not liking something secondly we see my second ayat is from surah az-zumar ayat number 10 in which allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala says inna ma yuwaffa as-sabiruna ajrahum bi ghairi hisab only those who are patient shall receive their reward in full without reckoning that means they will receive their rewards and where does the reward lie with it lies with allah rewards of patience one bears in the dunya also and one will bear in akhirah also falu ajruhu amthaliha 10 is the minimum allah can reward someone and the maximum the highest can go for as far as allah wills more than maybe 700 times or maybe more depending upon our intention and if we see according to hajar al asqalani he wrote the sharah of uh, bukhari that is fathul bari and in that he writes that sabr is the crux of good character so here in this ayat as allah says that those who are patient shall receive their reward in full is because according to asqalani he says that the crux of a good character is sabr is patience so therefore because it is one of the highest levels of good character therefore the reward lies in the highest degree also and no one else other than allah subhanahu wa taala can reward someone for being patient We see in our first hadith Hazrat Ibn Umar radhiyallahu anhu narrated Allah's messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam said the believer who mingles with the people and is patient upon their harming him will have a greater reward than a believer who does not mingle with people and does not show patience upon their harming him meaning it is very easy to go into seclusion you don't like someone It's very easy not to meet him. It's very easy to be alone. But in terms of reward, a person who mingles with others and then he bears any harm, any harshness or any rudeness or any other such feelings that hurt, that are hurtful come from others and he bears it and he is patient will receive a reward far more than a person who secludes himself from public 
from relatives, from relations. What does this teach us? It teaches us that we need to control our emotions. This is what you can call as self-management. What is self-management? That you are able to control yourself when, for example, somebody says some words that are quite hurtful to you. One way is to retaliate, one way is to ignore, and one way is to be patient, that it's okay, no problem. Sometimes we become restless and all the times that we have been patient, we spoil our one good uh, mode of uh, patience by becoming restless. And why do we become restless? Is because we want to see results immediately. Sabar, on the other hand, requires results as per when the time will come. When we hold ourselves from any negative reaction, Allah helps us to show us the outcome of our sabr in dunya and inshallah in akhirah as well. What is negative reaction? Negative reaction is, for example, if someone has, has said something mean, something rude, and I instantly exchange rude, rudeness with him. This is showing a negative reaction. For example, if someone was supposed to come and keep a glass of water here, and instead of keeping it here, he keeps it behind me, and I go into a negative reaction by throwing the glass. Why did you not keep it here? This is a sign of restlessness. A lot of people think that we are justified by reacting. Yes, to some extent, adil is important. We have to balance in adil. But negative reaction spoils the situation even more. Whereas you could have, if you had controlled your emotions, you could have solved the problem even by, by saying something nicely and politely. In the cases of death, we see sometimes it is very difficult to part with our dear ones. And Allah says that, الَّذِينَ إِذَا أَصَابَتْهُمْ مُسِيبَتٌ قَالُوا إِنَّا لِلَّهِ وَإِنَّا إِلَيْهِ رَاجِعُونَ That the people were Bashir as sabirin and who are those who will receive the glad tidings of being patient are those that whenever they encounter a musibat and musibat according to Hazrat Umar is something that uh, for a moment anything that comes to him that he does not like is called a musibat anything that he does not like, even when the light goes. We don't like when the light goes. So this is a musibat. So what should we say when the light goes? We say, inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi rajiyoon. But we see that in some cases, when our beloved one pass, they pass away, we are unable to bear this loss. And we go into restlessness. And then we start complaining that, why did Allah take my beloved one from me? And we will see that in this, we have a hadith here in which Nazar bin Anas radiallahu anhu narrates that Hazrat Anas radiallahu anhu said, If I had not heard the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam say, you should not long for death, then I would certainly have longed for it. But the guidelines from Prophet Muhammad sallallahu is what? We should not long for death. Otherwise, sometimes, the adversities or the calamities, if you will compare to happy moments, happy moments come and normally go faster than as per adversities that come and stay. And in that, to hold yourself on to patience is at times difficult. Yes, indeed it is difficult, just like namaz is difficult. Apart from some people who fear Allah and for them namaz is not difficult. Similarly, Sabar is difficult. So we tend to think that it was better to die than to face this. So just because Prophet Muhammad has prohibited us from asking for death, the Sahabi says that had this not been put on us, I would have longed for death. We take another hadith according to Hazrat Shoaib radiallahu anhu he narrated. Allah's Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, strange is the case of a believer there is good for him in everything. 
and this is only for the believer if a blessing reaches him he is grateful to allah which is good for him and if an adversity reaches him he is patient which is good for him that means sabr and shukr go together this is the balance that was required from humans from allah subhanahu wa taala that you remain in your limits you remain on the balance you have been blessed by nimats you don't need to go out of hands you don't need to start becoming arrogant and you don't need to then look down upon others this is a blessing by allah he can take it any time he wants to and on the other hand if an adversity if it does fall then we do sabr and this is good for him why because even if a thorn pricks on a finger and we are patient on that and we don't create a hue and cry our sins are forgiven our sins are washed so we will see that in our religion allah subhanahu wa taala has kept every moment for a reason somebody falls sick now this is something from allah this is a kind of a test that he may test someone how is he going to react when he is sick but if he keeps on complaining and complaining that why have i fallen sick rather than rather than looking at those who are in worse situations than him look at the victims of earthquakes look at the victims of floods look at the victims of volcanoes and tornadoes and etc and tsunamis they don't even get a chance to run away sometimes they are stuck under the debris for days and days there's nobody to hear them so instead of taking it as a moment where i can be tested i'm sitting here to give a test and my every word is going to matter i start complaining and the more we take out negative words from our mouth the more we fall into depression the more one can fall a victim of disparity whereas there is no disparity in islam because islam teaches us to be patient and patience is the crux of a good character why because this is where it leads you to live on your life tying your rope with allah subhanahu wa taala that you are being rewarded for the patience that you are encountering take another example food a lot of people cannot live without food and if a time comes when we need to show we need to respect especially ramzan a lot of people cannot fast during ramzan just because they cannot give up food and water they can give up water but they cannot give up food so ask yourself these are just a couple of hours but look at look at the abundance of of the goodness that i will receive just by fasting and all i require is patience here a lot of people love to sleep they cannot sacrifice their sleep for anything and where there are patient to to hold on to the sleep brings them rewards in abundance a lot of people we see economic disasters we see financial disasters what are the choices do we have we don't have other choices except to either fall under the category of a shakir or of a sabir and if i want to fall in the third category where i want to be a complainant all the time it's not going to solve the problem no dead one has ever come back and if i even sit and complain will the dead one come back no if i'm going through a financial crisis if i'm going to just sit and cry about it and complain that why was i picked up for this crisis do you think the crisis will go away no so we need to increase our knowledge to learn the ways of how to deal with the situation therefore in other words to understand sabr it also teaches us to use our brains rationally the moments where we have to apply sabr it teaches us to be positive the the general understanding of sabr is that islam wants to teach us to be positive even in times of adversity and calamity we need to be positive what do i do next instead of sulking because disparity comes from shaitan and he wants to put us in that mode where we stop asking from allah where we stop reverting to allah where we stop making duas with allah 
and islam on the other hand teaches us to be positive take the situation be brave so sabar there are other meanings of sabar is to be brave it does not mean to be weak it does not mean to be coward doing sabar is not being coward it is being brave because you are learning how to deal with the situation and tests why does allah put us through tests is because we learn and we become strong when we come out of the test and here we will see that According to Hazrat Sabit, he narrated that I heard Hazrat Anas radiallahu anhu say that the Prophet sallallahu said, patience is at the first stroke of a calamity. The first reaction that I am going to show at a calamity is what sabr is all about. If I am going to curse, if I am going to complain and then at the end I say, okay, now I am going to be patient and I leave it to Allah to resolve and solve it for me, this is not patience. There was this lady who was sitting by a grave of probably her son or her brother and she was reciting marcias and uh, Nabi Sallam passed by her and since she was crying Nabi Sallam told her to be patient and since she did not recognize Nabi Sallam she said just go you don't know what I've gone through and then later when she realized that the person who told her to be patient was Prophet Muhammad Sallam she came to him saying sorry I did not recognize you and this is what Nabi Sassam told her that patience is at the first stroke of a calamity. We take the example of Hazrat Umay Sulaim, her young child dies and her husband comes home and he was tired, he, was, he, was, he came back from work. She didn't tell him till the next morning. The child was sick and her husband asked her, how is our son? She said he's sleeping peacefully. And by the morning time, when the husband woke up, he took a bath, he's fresh, and then she tells him that the child has passed away. Now, this is patience also. This is the utmost level of showing patience. We take the example of uh, Umay Sulaim. In history, you will see that she uh, did hijrat twice. One was to uh, Abyssinia, and the second was to Medina. And while they were migrating to Medina, the tribe her husband belonged to came and they took away her son by saying that you can go for migration but you cannot take our child with you and her son was kept by the tribe of her husband for one year and for one year she used to sit and cry. You can imagine the agony of a mother when her little child is taken away from her and probably the child was just three years or four years old and he was taken away from her and you can understand the agony of a mother and the agony of the child. And then just because of her sabr and patience and she was not complaining to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for she realized that there is going to be a hikmat behind it and Allah is going to help her and by God Allah helped her. And then Allah put Rahim in the tribe of her husband and by that, by the end of the year, they returned the son to her. And we see a lot of services by her son in the history of Muslims. But the fact remains that sabr comes as a first reaction. What do I react first? This is why we've been taught to say inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi rajiun on whatever things we lose. For example, you've lost, somebody's come and stolen your phone. We see a lot of snatching these days. What do we say? Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi rajiun. It was given to me by Allah, it has been taken back by Allah. In the case of a death, yes, Nabi Sassam's daughter reminded him to come over when one of her child was dying. And Nabi Sassam took, her, took his time to come and he said, you need to do what needs to be done now. You need to be patient and you need to pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What has to be done cannot be undone. And when Nabi Sassam finally came, he had tears in his eyes to see his grandson dying. But at the same time, he had no complaints on his face. He, was, he had no complaints to say that why my child, why my grandson? So these are the lessons that we learn from our own religion and we should welcome. What, well, how do I react when somebody picks up on my mistakes and somebody wants to correct me? How do I react? We need to see this is the month of Ramzan and month of the Ramzan is the best time to take a training of sabr. Why? Because food and water is something we all cannot live without. And if we can live 
despite the fact that we are not having it for 15 hours and we can survive that means we can survive the highest of winds we can survive in all the situations Allah may put us, put us in we should not ask for sabr but when a time comes we can prove to be patient but one should never ask that oh Allah make me a sabir no we should say that oh Allah save me from the calamities oh Allah don't put me in any trial oh Allah don't let me go through any test I don't know how I may behave but if a time does fall on us then we need to show that oh Allah give us the courage give us the strength to bear it and Allah does it Allah helps for example a person who is in, in the way of Allah Allah helps, helps him in Allah ma's sabirin Allah is with those who bear with patience in namal usri yusra with any uh, uh, difficulty there comes an ease not after it but with it you will see in the case of a widow when a husband dies is it not that Allah opens doors for risk from anywhere for her she may not have even realized but Allah opens her doors for risk sometimes we see that children who were the sole bread earners you must have heard the cases of Baldia and the fire incidents and, and other incidences you must have heard that there were cases that that child was the only bread earner of the family and he had old parents who can't even work but do you think Allah is going to let those old parents die Allah is going to arrange for their risk and what Allah tries to make us understand through sabr is that you need to have tawakkul on Allah you need to not depend on the sources that you thought were making you dependent upon them as per your living Allah can take away any anything anytime but Allah is ever living and my tawakkul on Allah is that yes if Allah is there Allah is there to help me and he will make out my ways and this is what saves us from disparity there is no disparity in Islam yes there is sabr in Islam this is the re re replacement to disparity a lot of people go into depression when they lose something what is depression depression is one of the ways shaitan wants us to engage in it a lot of people have a habit of stealing they say they cannot tell this is something to do they have medical reasons that they cannot resist but to steal but in but in any hadith we don't find that Nabi Sallallahu has stated that robbery or stealing has something to do with the psychological problem well if it is then it can be treated but we cannot find excuses to go into restlessness and commit crimes and they say and then say we cannot resist it so here we see according to Hazrat Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu he narrated Allah's messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam narrated I have nothing to give but paradise as a reward to my slave a true believer who is I cause his dear friend to die he remains patient nothing but reward is Jannah reward of sabr is abundant and only and only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can give the reward on sabr and we do pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that may Allah save us from all calamities and may Allah save us from all forms of adversities and may Allah give us the strength and the tawfiq to be a shakir all the time and to be a shakir then we also see that sabr means to be steadfast steadfast means consistency like Allah likes any little amal any little action for as long as I was steadfast in it for example if I have uh, I like to do a little sadka and if I am doing little sadka I remain constant on it I remain consistent on it I don't give up sadka that I do it when I'm going through an adversity but when Allah has blessed me with nemats I forget to do sadka then I'm lost in my own world no for as long as we are consistent why because you need to hold on to it and sabr therefore also means to be steadfast and to provide provide with the means to hold on so that means it means that we need to keep ourselves consistent in those little actions that we may pick for example you see in the case of injustices we see that a lot of uh, uh, husbands they may be 
they may be doing sadka outside they may be taking others children to the hospital but if his own child is sick he doesn't have time to take him to the hospital right so there are moments of injustices where we need to show patience and show patience in a way that it is going to bring a change because when we give a negative reaction then the other person instead of becoming a help goes on to the defensive and this is when the situation worsens so for as long as we can one of us can hold himself back the other will tend to change but it takes time and we need to give time we need to give time to others to change but come to think of it how many times is it possible for us to change others is it easier to change myself alone or is it easier to change others you see mountains mountains can sink in the seas and there'll be no sound but one glass of water and you throw a pebble in it and you will see the water splashing out and you will see that there is noise coming out what does this prove that you can take in a lot of a lot of uh suffering we can tolerate suffering and if i want to become restless i can become restless on a very petty thing which may not have made a very big difference and so we see if someone on the other hand the moments of sabr someone is envious about you moments of revenge moments of mental torture physical torture and we see that someone who and then we see there are little moments in our life where we need to be patient on a traffic light the heat that we experience today you are hungry you are in an office you have to go and they tell you to wait you sit in the queue at a doctor's clinic and you have to wait and you start becoming impatient then we see moments where we see there has been a a disaster a natural disaster and maybe that we are deprived of certain facilities for some time water shortage electricity shortage yes these are our rights but that does not claim that we should go out and start becoming oppressors we need to be patient because in an in a gist of a hadith it is also said that if you see something that you dislike you give the rights to them and you ask your right from allah you be patient why because the the only means to let a society live a life of peace is when we maintain a culture where there is tolerance where we can bear one another where we can walk with one another where we can be in hand in hand with one another and we are not projecting a society where we all are becoming intolerant look at in this look at the schools a child comes home and he's got two marks less than his peer and the mother goes running to the teacher that how dare you give less marks to my ch- child and what are we ch- teaching to our children then to be intolerant and then to be intolerant to the extent that we go and we start confronting others then we also see that in times of sickness in times when we are disturbed how do we react then in times of treatment and the weather how do we react if my reaction is positive alhamdulillah one should be grateful to allah for keeping me steadfast but if my reaction is in the negative then i should ask allah that oh allah bestow sabr upon me so i can please you and with this our viewers we will end our program today and may we make our duas that may allah give us the tawfeeq to fulfill our responsibilities and may allah give us a happy living subhanakallahumma wa bihamdika ashhadu an la ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka wa atubu ilaik assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh 
Medina, 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 Medina.